To help us explore what's at stake in these meetings is Sung Yoon Lee. He is the Kim Koo Korea Foundation Professor in Korean Studies and Assistant Professor at the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy at Tufts University. Uh, professor, welcome back to the show. What do you make of uh, this latest turnaround from Trump and now the seemingly more optimistic tone looking ahead to June 12th? Well, after that unconventional snub by the discourteous letter last week, we saw that North Korea was actually quite eager to have the summit meeting, and that led to the South Korean leader and the North Korean leader meeting less than um, 24 hours later, or 48 hours later after the letter. And we also see now that President Trump is, as he has been all along, quite eager to have the summit, to have his moment, a historic moment in Singapore. So the, the will is there, but what remains uh, unabridged is the world of difference between the two parties in terms of the objectives of the so-called denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. We know that the U.S. wants front-loaded concessions, meaningful dismantlement right away within a few months. The North will not go for that. The North wants front-loaded concessions from the United States, political concessions, a peace treaty, sanctions relief. So there's a lot, long ways to go before there is a, a resolution to this issue. And you mentioned this second meeting between Moon Jae-in and Kim Jong-un. First of all, are you surprised that it even took place? And, and how significant was this to happen given all of what ended last week? Well, if the two Koreas are able to sort of uh, routinize the summit meetings, I think that's a good thing. Certainly, it would be helpful in eliminating ambiguity, misunderstanding, acrimony. But it really shows that both South Korea and especially North Korea, they want the summit meeting to go ahead. Now, what will that achieve beyond the embrace and handshakes and bonhomie? Uh, there will be political victories for both Kim Jong-un and President Trump. But I think North Korea has far more to gain. North Korea will be able to buy time and money with which to further advance its nuclear weapons programs beyond decommissioning the nuclear testing site and flashing smiles for the cameras. Uh, we've not seen Kim Jong-un really make any kind of meaningful concessions yet, yet he has become a reasonable leader, even a global statesman, meeting with various leaders like Xi Jinping. And don't be surprised if Putin just pops up in Pyongyang. That's what he did back in 2000, and it was the first ever visit by a Soviet or Russian leader to North Korea in the wake of the first ever inter-Korean summit in June 2000. And, and Professor, help us understand South Korea and Moon Jae-in's roles in getting the summit to happen. There are reports that Moon Jae-in may be at that summit in Singapore. Well, President Moon wants to be there. He wants to have a trilateral meeting and an announcement formally ending the Korean War and all those good things. But then a peace treaty is good only as far as, far as there is real intention between the adversarial powers to pursue genuine peace. We know that China and the U.S. never signed a peace treaty, yet normalized diplomatic relations. Um, Russia and Japan have yet to sign a peace treaty. South Korea and China did not sign a peace treaty, but the relations are fine. North Korea wants a peace treaty because it would enable North Korea to evict, to get the U.S. troops out of South Korea, which is in North Korea's interest. President Moon has a stake in all this because South Korea wants to de-escalate. Simply, there is just too much on the line. South Korea has grown very rich. So South Korean, the government and the public just doesn't, do not have the stomach to continue to escalate tension with North Korea. All right. Sung Yoon Lee, thank you so much for joining us from Boston. We appreciate it. Thank you.